Welcome back to the Mega Man Like mini series. Today we're going to focus on a slide mechanic. It's going to be very simple, but it's going to get us some basics for some area detection stuff that we're going to need for the next video, which is going to be about ladder climbing. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the resources tab. I just wanted to point out that we have a slide on these sprite sheets and then also one with the barrel out. And we got one for the boomerang and the boomerang attack as well. So now we can jump to animations tab. I'm going to copy the hit one and call it slide. And then all we got to do is change the frame to be the sliding frame now. And then we also need to adjust this connection point. So I'm going to pull up the connection two here or uh, set frame two. I'm going to move it towards the barrel and then do the same thing for the left facing. All right, so now that we have the animation set up, we do need to refactor all of our wall detection a little bit. You can see if you click on the wall detection, you can see the size right here. You can see that the Y is only six pixels high. And that's going to be a problem for our game because let's just say that we have a tile that we want to slide under. So I'm just going to grab a random tile here. I'm going to go to the scene. Move the player over here. And then we're going to have just an area that you would slide under, right? So you can see that our the tile grid size is 16 by 16. And so right now, if I was to play the tile wall, if you press F1, bring up, let's see, tile wall, which will show you the tiles, and then wall detection, which will show you wall detection. So in idle and walking, I have this small wall detection. Well, I can just walk right underneath that tile that we technically want to slide under. So we need to resize our wall detection that's going to be more scalable for a slide. So back in the animations for the slide, we're going to bring it up to about 16. And we're going to copy that and paste it on the right facing. And if it ever gets stuck like this, because I've already pasted it, you can just click off and it will resize. But it's important that the slide is 16 because we want the top of the wall detection touching the bottom of the tile wall detection right here. And then we also want the normal, you know, grounded one from the bottom of the wall detection. But for the other ones, we want it up to about 17. And this is so that it is literally one pixel too high as far as going under that tile. So I'm going to copy this. We'll just paste these in. Like I said, if it's not updating, it actually is. It's just could be a little slow in showing it. So once I knock out all these, then we can play test again. Now you can see that I have a 17 high pixel while I'm in idle and walking. And now I cannot walk through those tiles. Now we can actually have a reason to slide. So now let's start to set up the slide in the objects tab. So there's a couple ways that we could do this. We could have this as a common action. We could also just have this as a regular node. I'm going to choose to do this as a regular action node because in this hit one right here, we controlled it to go back to idle. Well, I want the slide to go back to idle but I also want it to go back to idle in certain conditions. And so because of that, I'm just choosing to do a normal action. So I'm going to grab the jump here, actually, and just rename this one to slide and just change the animation here. So the easy part of the slide is actually the programming the move forward. So first off, we do not want to jump. That's actually one risky thing about copying a jump state like that. And then we do want to lock out the input and lock out direction change because when you are sliding, you're committed. We also want to increase the speed. I'll just say 200%. And then we also want to add a move toward display direction. And we actually don't need to specify anything here. We're just going to start moving towards display direction and we'll hit OK. And because we cannot move, we'll never overwrite this. So it will constantly be moving forward or the way that you're looking. All right, so now that our logic is pretty well set up, we can now start to say, how can we get there? And so I'm going to grab a link, drag it over here. And for me, it's going to be when I press L2. 
and it's going to be an on press here. And then I'm just going to copy and paste that from the idle as well so that we can do that from idle. And now we can actually test this. We have a, a usable slide right now. It's not going to be very nice to use, but you can see that we can walk up, we can't go by. And then when I press L2, I can slide, but we slide forever. So let's set some conditions to stop sliding. All right. So first off, we know that we can go back to idle when the slide's done and we can just have idle be the one that dictates where it needs to go. So for instance, if we go back to idle and we're falling, we can go to fall. We could also just have a link going to falling as well. That might be a little safer and it will also avoid the, the blip of going to idle and then to fall real quick. But really, if you're going from walking and idle, it's really not that much different. So you can just get away with going to idle here. And so we're going to create another condition and just the easiest one to do first is gonna be the actual dash time. So if we put like a 0.3 here and we play test here, you can see that now we can dash and we dash for about three seconds. Now there's a couple things going on. You can see that we dash off the, we can dash off the platforms and that might be a thing to dash off the platforms. In this video, we'll prevent that and mainly just to show a way to do that and to start getting introduced to area detection as well. So we'll, we'll slide and then we'll stop as soon as we're gonna go off the ledge. Cause I don't know how other games really handle it, but we'll just introduce that way. And then the one thing though that we need to consider is, let's see, the slide is about that long. So if I start sliding right here, you can see that I actually don't uh, finish by the time I'm on the other side of the, of the block. So I'm getting this weird up and down thing. And so we need to prevent that because that kind of clipping can be actually game breaking. So part of our check here is going to be a contact with tile wall detection right here. And we're going to be checking to make sure that the top portion of the tile wall, remember it's 16, 16 pixels high. So it's exactly matching that one tile hole that we're sliding in. So the top of it's going to be touching that other tile wall the whole time. So we're going to say if the top side of that tile wall is not touching, and then that is going to be the other condition that has to be true. So it's either going to be after 0.3 seconds and it's not touching the top or the top side of its tile wall is not touching the bottom side of a tile wall basically. So both of those have to be true. So now if we did that same thing, you can see that it, it went all the way to the end. I can even slide a little longer here and it will go all the way to the end. And actually just to kind of show that off even more, we're going to make this a little longer here just to show that you can slide this whole thing without coming out of the, the slide. So there we go. Now, no more clipping on that end. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is on the corners here, for because remember I said we're going to prevent it from sliding off. On these corners, we're going to provide an area detection that is going to say you can't slide anymore. And so to do that, let's go to the resource tab. And really this part's not required for area detection. I just find it a lot easier to handle. So here is a placeholder asset from NoobK, and it has these numbers one through 15. And I like to use these to represent the area detection. The area detection is a lot like region restrictions if you come from RPG Maker, where you can have a tile that represents a number, and then when you're on that tile, you are registering that number, and then that number can trigger things. And so this is the tile set that I will be using to mimic the way that RPG Maker handles it. And then I'll go to tiles and add a new standard tile. And we'll just add these placeholders. And I'm just going to call this area detection and hit OK. And it auto uh, partitions it and everything. So now I'm going to click on one of these and I'm going to say over here, this is where you can assign the area detection that you want this tile to be. 
over here, I will say that this is going to be area detection one. And then on this one, this one will be area detection two, and so on and so on. Now, we do need the activation condition to be when object is overlapping the tile. And so since I didn't do that on number one, I just want to show you that you can actually grab multiple of them and change the setting at the same time. And you'll notice that it says that they're not the same value, but we did change them, their, their setting at the same time. So you, so you can do stuff like that. That's really nice. But what overlaps the tile? I've, I have a lot of videos that do discuss this. I think my swimming ones are the most apparent. But in the animations tab, the center, this little red dot right here, that is what dictates whether you're in a, a tile or not as far as overlapping goes. So when this little red dot enters this tile, it's going to be registered as being in uh, area detection of one. And the same with this one, except for it would be registered as two. Now, I do want to point out, because I don't usually point this out, most of my stuff that I do has been with overlapping tiles, but you actually can have area detection be if you touch a tile wall detection as well, this top option. Um, in order to get this, though, you would have to have wall detections on this but this doesn't usually work, or this won't work in this case, and in a lot of other cases that I use this in, because you want this to not be seen by the player. You want this area to just not even exist in the, in the scene. And so I like to use the overlap so that we can kind of make that, that happen. So now we can go to the scene and start placing these tiles. And we're gonna go to, let's see, yep, the test scene. We're going to add another tile set and we're gonna select the area detection tile set. Hit okay. And now in the tiles, we have two tabs to choose from. We can use the test tiles, which we've been using, or the area detection. Now the area detection, it's one really nice thing about it is it's not layer specific. So you can have these on a different layer. And so a lot of times what I like to do is go to the very bottom layer and call this, let's just say area detections. And so for this area detection, we'll just say that one will be the area detections that won't let you slide off a corner. So in that case, I'll need one right there and one right there, one right there and one right there, just for now, just to, to show this off a little more. And now we can go to our player layer and they're not on our player layer, but they are there. Now, right now they actually don't do anything, but if we did play test, we would see them. Now, real quick before we start implementing the logic, you might be thinking, well, you know, we're seeing them right now. Do I have to always overlap them or cover them with tiles and stuff like that? And one cool thing about doing this way is at the end, when you're ready to build your game, you can go to these tiles right here. You can grab them all, just all the area detections you would have, and you can just change the opacity of them to zero. They keep the same values, you just can't see them. And then when you are want to edit them again, you can just you know redo them, or you could just have them slightly or something like that. But if you take the opacity off, you can see that they're gone. And if we go to the debug here, under the player, every object has a area detection right here. And if you're not on any, you're negative one. So now let's, uh, let's see, right right here. You can see that now I'm triggering that one tile that is transparent. So that's one nice thing about this kind of a, a setup here is that you have clear area detections. You can see them very easily while you're play testing and while you're setting up your scenes. But then when it comes time to build, boom, you can just disappear them. Okay, so now that we know that Area detection one is what is going to prevent a slide. Let's go and implement that. So if we go to the link that goes back to idle, right now it's after a certain amount of time, which is the dash length or the slide length. Then we have the top wall detection check for if we are actually sliding underneath something. And now we need to add another one and that is going to be a, a switch variable change. And we're going to make sure that this objects, which is our player area detection, if it equals one. So if it equals one, 
that means that we're on that one tile or a corner of those ledges. We're going to hit OK. Now, we need to set this up because we want these both to be AND, but we want this one to be an OR, you're on a one. So this will be the first part of it. If we go and play test here and jump up here and slide, you'll see that it stops me. And I can keep trying and it will stop me. The issue with this right now is that I can keep trying to press L2 and eventually I will fall off. And so what we have to do is add one last check and it's gonna be on to the initiating the slide. And we just have to make sure that this object's area detection is not equal to one. And then we have to make sure that we click change if all conditions are met. So then I'm gonna grab this condition and then we also have to check for the walk one as well. And then we'll change if all conditions are met. So now if we're ever in that situation again, where we press L, we come up to a ledge and then I'm trying to press L2 again and it's not working. So one thing that caught my eye while play testing was that the HUD object was not appearing if I put the player outside of the initial camera. So you can see right here, it's not up there, which it should be. So what you can do real quick is you can just go to any of these really, and you can say move object, and we do coordinates right here. And I know that it's placed 16 and 16, and I'll show you where I got that from. You go to the scene here, and you actually select that HUD switcher, you can see the default position right here. So this is the coordinates. And you need the coordinates based within this first scene area because when you're displaying on the camera, these are the coordinates that it's gonna use. It needs the zero through 320 and the zero through 180. That's what it needs. So on 16 by 16, that is definitely usable. So we'll go 16 by 16 and we're gonna say that they're coordinate based and then we're going to move them instantly. So zero uh, duration, and we're going to move this self, and that's what we want it to do. So I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna move this to the very top. So that's the first thing that's ran. And then I'm just gonna copy it. If you had a bigger project, this one really doesn't matter because I could just keep it right there. But if you had a bigger project where you had multiple weapons, you might want the another one in these or you would want a a setup node like right here and then you would have all the links going to the different weapons based off what you do but this one would be like your uh, move in place basically your setup move to place kind of a thing and then it would go to to one like that but for for this little small uh mini series this move to object will now work. If we click play test, it's now there and it moves around just like it should. I'm not sure exactly what it, what would be causing that, but anyway, that's a quick fix if you had the same issue. And so yeah, we did the slide today. We went over this little HUD issue here. We went over a little bit about area detection, which is gonna help us out on the ladder climbing video, which is next. It's gonna be awesome because you can climb up and down while you're charging and shooting. And it's, it's really nice. So with that, we'll see you at the next video.